Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me, James. Hope you guys are all doing well. And I'm back with a guide on everything you need to know about Ark Survival Evolved Attribute System. Various attributes can be leveled up throughout your progress in the game for both your characters and dinosaurs, but we're going to be concentrating on character attributes, what they all do and what you want to be leveling. Of course, there's not one size that fits all. It's impossible to do a guide and say, hey, copy my stats, because it really does depend on your player style. So the first thing you need to ask yourself is it whether you're playing player versus player or player versus environment. In PvP, there's a much different way to build a character. And what I'm going to show you is both variants of how I would build for PvE and for PvP. So first off, at the top, we've got health. This is a representation of your current life value, and when it reaches zero, you're dead. Now, there's more to it than that. When your health reaches below 30 hit points, your character becomes injured. You'll notice a broken bone symbol in the bottom right-hand corner. You'll no longer be able to run and you will move much slower. In order to regenerate health, you can do this by eating a simple cooked meal or using the consumables like the blood pack and medical brew. All sorts of things besides being attacked can lower your health. Falling, drowning and extreme temperatures, for example, can all lower your health. However, it's not the most important stat to put all your points into. And I recommend leaving this one just at the start. Next down, we have stamina. This is a representation of how much energy you have. Actions such as running, jumping, swimming, harvesting resources, and attacking will all drain your stamina. Actions that consume stamina will also make you drain food and water levels more rapidly. The temperature also affects the speed of your food and water. When cold, your food drops faster and when hot, your water drops faster. So whether you're playing on a PvE or PvP server, stamina is certainly not a wasted attribute point that you can spend. Next down we have oxygen, obviously a measure of how long you can hold your breath underwater. It also affects how fast you can move in the water and submerging yourself in water will slowly drain your oxygen over time and if you run out of oxygen you will begin to suffocate until you either reach the surface or die. When suffocating your health power will rapidly deplete. Next down we have food and water and these will gradually deplete over time. Certainly in the early game you'll find food and water will drain a little bit faster. But as you progress through the game you'll find that these stats are less and less important. At the beginning you'll be able to craft the water skin which does lose water over time. But you'll find that in the early game especially if you're on the island map that you can be quite close to the ocean and water is never that far away. You can also grab a handful of berries until you're at the point where you can cook some meat. I'd actually recommend never putting any points into food or water. There's certainly better places that you can spend your attribute points. Next down we have weight and this is a measurement of how much you can carry. Everything in Ark has a weight value and the total weight value of everything you're carrying can become too great and you will slow down or even stop. If your weight becomes equal or above 85% of your total weight, you will become encumbered, which will slow your movement speed considerably and render you unable to jump. And if your carried weight becomes equal or greater than your total weight, you will be unable to move until you've dropped the items. Now, I often find when I begin a new game that weight is where I spend my first points. And as you progress throughout the game, reaching mid to late game levels, you're going to be having a lot of extra items in your inventory. So weight is a very important attribute to stack. So it doesn't really matter if you're playing PvE or PvP, weight is definitely a good place to spend your attribute points. And it also tends to be the first place I start to pump my points into. Now melee damage is the most contested stat attribute that you can pump any points into. I myself as a PvE player do not pump any melee damage points in and I'm going to explain why. Nope. Yeah. Wrong. Melee damage in Ark Survival Evolved is a measurement of the amount of extra damage dealt when you're attacking. It is also a measurement of the amount of resources harvested in fewer hits. But I want to emphasize in fewer hits. All items that are harvestable in Ark Survival Evolved have a health total, whether that's a tree, a rock or a metal node. 
When increasing mealy damage, for instance, the amount of time it takes me to harvest a metal node, for instance, I would be able to do it in fewer hits. But it does not increase the amount of resources harvested. Of course, all different servers have different settings, but this is where it's most contested. So what it will increase is the chances of getting back a rarer resource item, such as hitting a crystal node may gather me some extra rare mushrooms, but it doesn't actually increase the amount of resources gathered. So when it's against the environment, melee damage can be almost the most ineffective stat that you can put any attribute points into. So if I have, for instance, a ascendant pike as opposed to a regular pike i'm going to do more damage and if i pumped more points into melee damage that particular weapon is going to do even more damage but it does not affect ranged weapons i find that by the time i'm in mid game and as soon as i've got my shotgun it's very rare that i'm going to be using melee weapons also when it comes to harvesting resources i'm going to be using the dinosaurs on the map the various creatures are far better for gathering any resource and all creatures have different abilities. So I tend to use the creatures in order to gather my resources and when fighting creatures, I will use a ranged weapon. So therefore, any point that I put into melee damage is a complete waste of time. Nobody cares. But that being said, if I'm on a player versus player server, melee damage becomes very important. Using swords and melee combat, you can kite other players and dish out an amazing amount of damage. If you've got yourself a good set of flak armor and you've pumped lots of speed onto a player, you can quickly take out another player that's not expecting somebody to be built based in melee damage. In theory, with a good set of armor, you can even be able to take out things like Alpha Raptors by stacking a lot of melee damage. So I'm not saying that it's an entirely wasted stat. It goes without saying that melee damage is a great statistic to put on many dinosaurs. Sometimes it can have a completely different effect as well. For instance, putting melee damage onto the otter increases its hypothermic insulation. So these points can do different things, but we're concentrating on characters. So unless you're in a PVP situation, I think that pumping any attribute points into melee damage is a complete waste of time. I can see that one's probably gonna get contested down in the comments below. But just please remember, I'm only speaking about player versus environment. If you are a PVP player, I can totally understand why you would pump melee damage. Alrighty then. Next, we have movement speed, and that's a measurement of how fast you can move. The higher movement speed allows you to get from point A to point B quicker, and it uses less stamina in the process. I myself look like to put a few points into movement speed, but it's not an out and out important stat for me. I feel some players like to move around the map extremely fast. In fact, much faster than any of the dinosaurs on the map, and I tend not to do that. However, there's no right or wrong answer to this. It's literally down to the player and the individual themselves. For instance, high movement speed and melee damage can work to devastating effects on a PvP player server. So I'll never say that a point in movement speed is a waste. I just myself personally like to keep it to a lower level that's quite reasonable. The next point we have and is often quite forgotten about is fortitude. This is a very important stat to fill, whether you're on PVP or PVE. Fortitude is a measurement of the resistance to weather, torpidity and disease. A higher fortitude increases your natural hypo and hypothermic insulation, which is very important. By placing points into fortitude, you're gonna be able to withstand colder and hotter temperatures much easier. It also gives you a resistance to torpidity to a certain extent. So for instance, on a PVP player, if you're getting shot up with tranquilizer arrows, this is gonna help you out a little bit as well. Some creatures in the game can also dish out attacks that cause torpidity to go up, such as the scorpion. So it's a statistic that's very important to fill. So when you complete the game and get to the final boss, you'll find that the actual Overseer's Arena is extremely cold. There's a really high chance by that point you're going to be wearing tech armor. 
and a minimum of 22 points in fortitude is only just going to take that chill away. So I recommend bringing an otter into that fight, otherwise you're going to be switching between fur armor and your tech armor. I myself like to build a character that has a minimum of 22 to 24 points in fortitude. This means I can stand most of the weather and environments on any of the maps. You might find that in the artifact of the strong cave you still might get that ice cube effect and it may come on and off during that last fight. But bringing an otter along as well you won't feel the effects of the cold. And last of all we have crafting skill. This is a measurement of how fast you can craft items in the game and also the quality that they have. For instance having a high crafting skill will mean the custom food recipes you cook will have bonus to the stats as well as some of the more advanced engrams that you can craft. So when it comes to crafting skill points, I don't tend to pump that stat unless I do a mind wipe tonic. It is worth noting that if you do use the Rockwell mind wipe tonic, it takes 24 hours before you can take another one. And some official servers will only let you do this one time. But most servers only have the 24 hour cooldown. So check on the server that you're playing on whether it's worth using that item or not. I'll finish off by telling you how I like to build my player. I like to put a few points into health, stamina, mainly weight, a little bit in movement speed and 22 points in fortitude. After that, I'll probably put points back into weight, health, maybe stamina, but the attribute points I avoid entirely are food, water, melee damage and crafting skill. Again, if I'm doing a crafting binge one day, perhaps I'm cooking a lot of food and making a lot of recipes, it's well worth considering doing the Rockwell Mind Wipe Tonic and putting all of your points that you can currently get into crafting skill. It is a small bonus, but any bonus and advantage is an advantage in this game. So early points into weight, from there it's stamina and movement speed and health. And that's my guide to all of the attributes on Ark Survival Evolved. I hope you found that one useful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. I do plenty of other Ark content, including showing you how to complete this game without any mods in my Let's Play Complete series. So check that one out if you haven't already done so and some of the other guides. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.